And here is the Artist's Almanac for February 12th, 2018. It's the birthday of English naturalist and biologist Charles Darwin, born on this day in 1809, Shropshire, England. A child of wealth and privilege who loved to explore nature, Darwin was the second youngest of six children. In October of 1825, at age 16, Darwin enrolled at Edinburgh University to study medicine. However, the sight of blood made Darwin queasy, which proved to be a problem. A devout creationist, Darwin's interest in studying the literal truth of the Bible led him to Christ's College in Cambridge to begin studies in theology, and is quoted as saying, I did not then in the least doubt the strict and literal truth of every word in the Bible. However, at Christ College, Darwin was far more inclined to study natural history, where botany professor John Stevens Henslow became his mentor. It was Henslow whom eventually recommended Darwin for a naturalist position aboard the HMS Beagle, which on December 27, 1831, launched its voyage around the world with Darwin in tow. Puzzled by the geographical distribution of wildlife and fossils he collected on the voyage, Darwin began detailed investigations and in 1838 conceived his theory of natural selection. Darwin worked over his ideas exhaustively, and in 1858, 20 years after the voyage of the Beagle, naturalist Alfred Russell Wallace sent Darwin an essay that described the same idea, prompting an immediate joint publication of both of their theories, which was presented at the Linnaean Society of London on the 1st of July. Their importance in science is inescapable, and the whole field of evolutionary biology is founded particularly on Darwin's work. More generally, however, his influence can be felt in how the Christian orthodoxy that underpinned the history of most of natural theories has fallen away. In 2008, the Church of England issued this statement. Charles Darwin, 200 years from your birth, the Church of England owes you an apology for misunderstanding you and, by getting our first reaction wrong, encouraging others to misunderstand you still. Despite exhaustive scientific evidence, many people remain skeptical. The continued influence of creationism and intelligent design in the United States is well documented, with 40% of the general public still rejecting the theory of evolution outright. No educated person, however, questions the validity of Darwin's evolutionary theory, which we now know to be simple fact. Likewise, most of Darwin's particular theses have been fully confirmed, such as that of common descent, the gradualism of evolution, and the explanatory theory of natural selection. Darwin is without question one of the most influential figures in all of human history. After following a lifetime of devout research, Charles Darwin died at his family home, Down House, in London at the age of 73 on April 19, 1882. Darwin was honored by burial in Westminster Abbey, close to John Herschel and Isaac Newton. The funeral was held on Wednesday the 26th of April and was attended by thousands of people including family, friends, scientists, philosophers, and dignitaries. Sharing a birthday with Charles Darwin is American statesman, lawyer, and 16th President of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, born in a log cabin in Hardin County, Kentucky in 1809. Raised by poor parents, Lincoln received less than a year of formal education by the time he reached the age of 21. In 1831, at the age of 22, Lincoln moved to the Illinois village of New Salem and was eventually elected to the Illinois State Legislature. Before leaving office, Lincoln was admitted to the Illinois Bar, soon becoming one of the most respected lawyers in the region, known for his honesty and influential manner with juries. At the age of 33, Lincoln married Mary Todd, a well-educated woman of a notable Kentucky family. They eventually had four sons, only one of which, Robert Todd Lincoln, survived to manhood. Lincoln served a single term in Congress, then went into semi-retirement from politics in order to concentrate more on his law practice. The Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854, which allowed for the propagation of slavery into the new territories, became a catalyst to Lincoln's decision to seek political office again. Lincoln joined the new Republican Party and ran for the U.S. Senate in 1858, and two years later went on to become the Republican nomination for president. Lincoln was known for his outspoken anti-slavery ideology, 
and as a result of his nomination, 11 southern states declared their independence from the Union. When the South fired on Fort Sumter in Charleston Harbor on April 12th of 1861, Lincoln called for 75,000 volunteers to help put down the rebellion. After over a year of indecisive fighting, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing the slaves of the rebelling southern states, which took effect on January 1st of 1863. Subsequent Union victories at Gettysburg, Vicksburg, and Chattanooga soon had the southern armies permanently on the defensive. It was during a dedication ceremony at Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, on November 19th of 1863, that he presented the Gettysburg Address, a two-minute long speech now recognized as one of the world's greatest orations. Shortly after his re-election, Lincoln drafted and promoted the 13th Amendment, which was ratified on January 31st of 1865, freeing all remaining slaves in the Union. Lincoln was shot by John Wilkes Booth at Ford's Theater on April 14th of 1865. Abraham Lincoln died the following day, five days after General Robert E. Lee's surrender at Appomattox, which concluded a war that cost the lives of 620,000 American brothers, fathers, and sons. In his second inaugural address, just six weeks before his assassination, Lincoln eloquently summed up his beliefs. Here's the last paragraph. With malice toward none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow, and his orphan, to do all which may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with all nations. Thanks for listening. Be kind, do good work, and until next time.